Hi, welcome to I Just Want to Talk About Books. I'm your host, Suhaila. And Zozo, apparently. <laughs> and we are here to talk about books. Um, should we call you Zozo from now on or what exactly? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, but I think it's growing on me already. Okay. Um, fine by me if you're okay with that nickname, but okay. So thought we'd start off on a happy note. Um, this got to be the worst year or what? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, we all know that a lot happened, but I mean, there were some good things happening this year, I guess. A few things, right? Yeah. Some people are really excited about 2021, though. Are you? Mm, I don't want to say excited. I'm not excited. I'm kind of, like, scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, normally, I would have already bought... Um, my planner for next year and started asking you for inspiration how to organize it but i no <laughs> i'm not gonna do that anymore i mean it doesn't really make a difference to me to be honest i'm going to be a typical capricorn here i can hear you sis <laughs> but i'm just gonna say that just because we're starting new year it doesn't mean things are magically going to be to go back to normal it, like i mean stop expecting life to go back to normal next year but i just really really hope that i'd be proven wrong and then i'll just have to eat my own words <laughs> i hope so too because i'm like what no <laughs> it has to january right yeah um anyways so 2020 is almost over um i thought about something like if you can if you can describe 2020 um by choosing a book title like can you think of a book title to describe this year wow um i can think of a few books <laughs> um there's this um there's this book that i read um i think at the beginning of the confinement i was still in denial by the way around march or april It's called the, the, the Girl with All the Gifts. I think I talked to you about it. Do you remember it? Yeah, I remember it. But how is the title related to, the, to 2020? Well, it's about the apocalypse. And it's about um, a plague taking over Earth and zombies and a lot of morbid crap. Okay, okay. I, no, I, okay, so the content of the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the, to the topic of the... Um, the book is about a pandemic as well is that what you're saying like station 11 but it's not it's not the same as station 11 no i meant like funny titles to describe 2020 and what i had in mind is great expectation great expectations has nothing to do with 2020 but i'm like that title though is exactly what happened to me like in January like we were we all had these expectations I guess the title is supposed to be sarcastic and that I don't know I haven't read that book yet but I'm thinking great expectations um unfortunate events like the series uh, of by lemon. lemon something yes yes things fall apart too that one is accurate <laughs> well that that's, that's very accurate actually Um, so yeah, like if I could describe 2020, those are the titles I'll be using. Unfortunate events, things fall apart, and great expectations. Well, I mean, it wasn't that bad. Come on. It wasn't that bad. It could have been a lot worse. That is, that is true. But you know me. I've always seen the, the negative side of things. Like I'm negative 24-7. <laughs> It's exhausting job. No, no, seriously. I really think that next year will be better. I mean, it can't get any worse. I mean, it can, obviously, it can. But let's just keep our fingers mm -hmm. crossed. Maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, so um, today's um, episode will be about reading goals for next year. Is that something you thought about, Suhaila? Reading goals for... Yes, of course I did. 
or goals in general besides reading goals have you set any goals have you no 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 <laughs> you're really not um committing to this year are you no not at all like i'm going with very low expectations here <laughs> <laughs> yeah what about you um i want to um I want to be out there more. I don't know how to explain this without getting too personal about it. I just want to like uh, be more in touch with the world because I feel like once I get into this bubble, it's very difficult for me to get myself out. The more I'm there, um, the harder it is for me to get out or experience things. And um, I'm kind of turning into this hermit and I don't really like it all that much because um, Yeah. What's wrong What's with being a hermit? I feel attacked. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not doing it for me anymore. I want to just go out more by myself and with other people. You know, brunch, uh, uh, dates, reading dates, um, walking by the beach, things that I used to do before and things I never really did. Um, so I just want to do that and spend more time with my family. Cool. I'm just going to spend more time home. Because <laughs> <laughs> they can't get enough. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's. It's, this past year ha ha has made me realize that there's a lot of things that I was taking for granted. And a mm. lot of things have been taken away from me. Um, places mm. that I used to enjoy going to, you know, things that used to make me feel great are like gone now. And yeah. I just want to, if I get the chance, if if I get some of those things back, I just want to fully enjoy them before they're stripped away from me again you know i was thinking of like the first thing i'm gonna do when this nightmare is over mm -hmm. is give everyone a hug i freaking miss hugs like i'm talking about my close friends here i'm not talking about mm -hmm. strangers i don't go around hugging everyone <laughs> <laughs> i'm not that weird i don't give free hugs but i really miss hugging my friends i mean i so, haven't yeah, seen like, it so long so Oh, yeah, you're going to be the first one. You're going to be the first one. <laughs> and Fatim Zara as well. Oh, my God. I miss hugging that girl. Um, <laughs> so Fatim Zara, just, just to let you know, and you as well, Zinev. So if we ever meet, I'm going to hug the shit out of you, both of you. So just brace yourselves. <laughs> I love that. I love hugging. So, yeah, I can't wait. And we're doing that reading date, remember? For sure. I am so in. I'm just so ready for that date. You have no idea. So exciting. Yeah. Something to look forward to. Yeah. We're... Thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> so what next? Okay. We move to the reading goals. Reading goals. <laughs> okay. Um, first question. How do you feel about reading challenges? Um, I think, uh, I think reading challenges are fun until they're not, um, you know, some, yeah, some reading challenges tend to strip me out. I don't need that in my mm. life, but so, okay, let me, okay. Let me go back. So this is what I do. I would just basically watch videos of people talking about their reading goals and look new and like, look up new reading challenges from different blogs to get new ideas and then mm -hmm. I would write my own in my journal which takes forever by the way because I have to choose the right pens and of course my handwriting should look pretty um and once I'm done with that I close my journal until the next year with new reading goals <laughs> okay so that's what I do that sounds fun <laughs> that's my thing I just can't stick to my goals for the life of me. But that doesn't stop me from crying There's every year. There's nothing wrong with that. Of course not. 
There is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> what do you think? How do you feel about reading girls? Or reading um, challenges? You know, I'm not really... Uh... I don't like competitions. I don't like competing. I like doing things at my own pace. Um, everything. I don't like uh, stressing myself out because, as you said, life is stressful enough as it is. And reading is one of the things that I do to kind of escape um, life. Um, so the idea of um, stressing myself out to reach a certain number of books or to keep up with other people. It's just not really my thing anymore. But I did do reading challenges before, years ago. I used to, remember that, that year when we read 100 uh, books a year? You remember that year? I, I remember that year vividly. And it was, um, it was a crazy experience. <laughs> it was the year you got your e-reader as a gift, right? That's right. Your first. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so like, my brother was like, if you if you actually read 100 books, I'm going to get you an e-reader. And I was like, okay, challenge accepted. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, man, it was hellish. I'm not going to say it was, it was easy. Nice. I, of course not. It, it was, was nice. A book in a year. But no, no. Yeah, 100 books, like 100 books a year was a crazy, it's a crazy challenge. People who can read... 100 books a year easily um i'm gonna say you're awesome seriously because i did it once and it was a fun experience but until it wasn't <laughs> it just i think it started getting stressful at the end it was yes because you know at one point i remember this like i just remember looking at the number of pages instead of what i was reading it was not enjoyable. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, how long is it going to take me to finish this goddamn book? This book is so long. How long would it take me? Like, all that matter is that number. And it didn't do it for me because I didn't enjoy the experience of I did, of course, write, liked some books, but mm -hmm. it just, as you said, it just be became this thing like a challenge and number that I had to hit. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, the e-reader was a good reason to, you know, push myself to do it. But again, no shit. <laughs> I don't think it's the right way to go about it. Um, if you want to sit to to set a goal of reading one hundred books a year, do it, but don't stress about it. Do it as your own at your own pace, um, and be kind to yourself. I feel like I was really. <laughs> I was so strict on myself. I was like, girl, you better get that book. You better finish it. Um, also, like, uh, my sister told me this. I didn't know that. But she said, like, every time someone, like, at home when I'm reading and someone would try to come and talk to me, I would give them this look. <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to read here. Leave me alone. Do not talk to me. I was grumpy cat. 24 7. I don't like when that happens either. <laughs> but it was fun. It was fun doing it, though. It was fun doing it. It was. It um, was it was for me too. Mm. I used to go to the to the bookstore to that America, you remember it? And mm. I used to like look for books because I didn't really have a TBR. So I just I used to scout for books. Um uh okay. yeah, I used to go and just try to look for books that I I want to read next. And it was a really fun year for me, but I think that the reason why we both managed to read a hundred books is because we weren't really we hadn't we didn't have any real responsibilities at the time, or we didn't mm. have a lot of things on our minds, not as no. much as we do now. That is true um, because of work and everything else. So it was a little bit yeah. um, easier ish um yeah to do but i mean uh last year i think i i this year was it last year that year? i don't remember which year but the last time i think i challenged myself to read 50 books and it was there on goodreads but i didn't really bother to um update it or 
keep track of the books I'm reading. I'm pretty sure I read more, but I just, it didn't make sense. I was like, whatever, who cares? But to be honest, at the yeah. same time, I kind of feel sad because I'd want, I want to keep track of the books I read. Mm. It's just that at the time when I'm in the zone, I don't really care much about updating anything. So, yeah, not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, that like that is sort of linked to the next question. What are your reading plans for next year? Um, mm -hmm. Let's start with Goodreads. Since we're talking about the Goodreads challenge, mm -hmm. basically in Goodreads, you set a goal of how many books you want to read in that year. For my Goodreads challenge, I'm going with one book this year. What? Are you freaking serious right now? I know it's lame, but it stresses me out when I get an email that says, you are three books behind. Here is a list of books you get to get you back on track. I don't like that. I just hate oh, it. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So I now I just sit the Goodreads challenge in a way to keep track of books I've read that year. And that's all. Like if you go to my Goodreads account, you can see that I have, I don't know how many books I've read this year. Is it 30 or 37? I don't know. But it's just every time I read a book, I just add one number and that's it. There's no uh, reading goal, but it's just a number there. And it, it's set in a way to keep track of the books I read during that year. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm making sense here. You are actually. You are. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you want to read 50 books, go ahead and do it. If you want to read 40 books, you know, do it, do as uh, like, do whatever you want. It's all up to you. Um, I mean, okay. question, question, question. Go, go, go. Do they really still send that, that email? <laughs> you are 10 books. Behind. <laughs> they do. That's what I'm telling you. They would send an email saying, you are 10 books behind and here is a list of books to get you on track. I'm like, I already have lists, bitch, leave me alone. <laughs> no, not cool, Goodreads. That's what are so you not talking cool. About? I don't like you anymore. Um, yeah. If I like a book and I don't want it to finish, I don't need someone to tell me you are three books behind. I'm not going to rush my way through that book. I'm going to take my sweet time to read it. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, if I hit that 30 or 50 book number or not, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I think you said, you said you want to sit 50 books next year. Do you, you want to try and attempt? Okay. Let's go with attempt to read 50 books next year. I like that word. <laughs> That's fine. I am going to attempt to read, I don't know about 50 books, um, but um, I'm going to try um, maybe 40, maybe 60. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll think about it. Cool. I'll think about it for sure. Yeah. Um, I want actually this year, I want to try the book riots read harder challenge. Do you know about it? What? The book riots read harder challenge. Have you heard of it? What is that? No. Okay. So basically it's in the read harder challenge. There are 24 prompts that are designed to help you break out of your reading bubble. In other words, you read to genre, you, like you read to genres, authors, and topics you wouldn't normally pick up. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, I have with me the Read Harder Challenge 2020 this year. Mm -hmm. I think the one for next year is not out yet, but I'm just going to read out some of the prompts so that you'd get an idea. Okay. Okay. Okay, so like one of the prompts for like Read Harder Challenge this year was read a mystery where the victim is not a woman or read a graphic memoir. Um, read a food book about a cuisine you've never tried before and so on. Like there's so many like there's so many prompts. Um, so like whenever I feel like, you know, reading out of my comfort zone, I would go and check the Read Harder Challenge. I'm not going to think of it as a challenge, though. It's just suggestions, I guess. Yeah, like just prompts, like tasks. Like it's like a mm. bingo, 
board thingy like you as you finish a like you when you finish reading a book that you know uh it completes that prompt you just check it off and yeah that's it basically um okay. yeah but i'm just not i don't want to think about it as a challenge like i'm not planning to finish all of the prompts the 24 prompts but it's something that i'm gonna go back and look at every now and then whenever i feel like reading something different um i guess this is me trying to trick my brain into doing something without freaking out <laughs> <laughs> hey now listen these are just prompts it's no big deal you don't have to commit to anything just do things at your own pace kind of thing i love this like yeah, yeah you're taking it easy on yourself I just remember, by the way, something. I really want to try and read some of Bill Gates' recommendations. He always shares his reading lists. He's like, he reads books that I want to read, but don't usually. Like serious books? Grown-up books? Yes, yes. Grown-up books. I think his bangs are funny, and I cannot take him seriously. That's it. I said it. Okay. Keep going. What? He looks shady. He looks shady. <laughs> he has bangs, right? He has bangs? Okay, let me Google that. He doesn't have bangs. Are we talking about the same person? He has bangs and glasses and okay. update shirt. He he used to have bangs, but he changed his his hairstyle. <laughs> I think he has like low key bangs. <laughs> that sometimes he like brushes them off his forehead. I don't know why he reminds me of vegetable. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so that means you are never reading his reading list or you're never trying. Oh, God, I'm going to hell. Okay, stop <laughs> exchange. Stop exchange. Um, anyways, yeah. So what I was saying, I really want to try some of the books on his list because they sound interesting. Tell me what are what are what are some of the those books? Oh, the books on his list. There is Gentleman in Moscow. Um, I don't know if you've seen the skeptic reader reading that one. Um, but I had my eyes on that one for a very long time. Also, he has this book called Why We Sleep. And I've heard about this book so many times and it's on his reading list as well. Um, so that's something I'm interested in. Uh, what was that book? A book about like viruses or something so i forgot the title we're gonna mention it in the, in the description box so you'll have it there i forgot the title but it's about viruses uh, i don't think that's something you're interested in you know but maybe yeah he maybe has some I'll interesting books try the second book why we sleep yeah it's really good um i mean i haven't read it but i've heard it's good so what about you what are your reading challenges um at the moment yeah. um maybe read the book that i recently bought oh okay yeah and i also want to read king of scars yeah and, okay i like that and i want to reread uh the book thief uh i'm i'm oh. yeah i want to read it yes and the messenger by the same author i i know i know about it but i haven't read i just read the book thief and that's it um i heard it's really cool so i want to give it a try as well i mean i really loved the good the book thief so i might as well just check out his other books um yeah mm -hmm. i want to try and read one of those like um um what do you call them slow burn the books that you like to read what's what's that author oh um what's her name mariana something yeah so i want to try and read um you, you like you recommended a bunch of her books i have them on my e reader yes 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 please read it it's good you're gonna like okay. it okay so i'm definitely i have my eye on that one so i want to check out um, one of your favorite authors and read her books just so that I know what are you talking about most of the time <laughs> <laughs> you're like Suheida this book is just 
You freaking gotta love it. Read it. Read it. I'm like, okay. Swoon, swoon, okay. Swoon. I think. Okay, so it's about time to read it. Um. Yeah, there are like there are so many other cool reading challenges out there. Like there, like um, you know, there's this challenge where you read your favorite author's books, all of his books or all of her books, um, mm -hmm. or maybe Paulo Coelho. That's your favorite author. Mm. Are you talking to me? Oh, that's not your. He's not your favorite author, really. Are you shitting me? <laughs> what the fuck? What the alchemist? It's your go-to book. You are wrong, and you know that. Okay. Um. Oh well. Whoops. That's not your favorite author. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, oh God. Okay. So yeah, there's this challenge of reading like books by your favorite author or like a new author you want to try. So basically, you would just read all the books, um, all their books. Or maybe like reading so many books from a certain genre or a topic, um, reading a book from every country in the world. This sounds like fun. I've read a blog like this lady did this challenge with, where she read a book from each country. Did you read about it? I have a friend who tried it, but not with the intention of it being a challenge. She just felt uh, interested in reading literature from different um from different from different countries and she did, she did recommend a few books to me from china and japan hi larissa i don't know if you're listening i hope you're great um so she did that uh i think a few months back but i don't think it was um because of a challenge or something it's just she was just interested in trying literature from different cultures that's really awesome, and it doesn't have to be a it doesn't have to be a challenge, as you said. It could be like an ongoing project, it's something that you mm -hmm. keep track of. Like, oh, I really want to try books from different countries. Usually, countries you've, you know, like uh, authors from different countries you've never heard of. Um, there's also the problem of like the translation. Would it be avail available in English or Arabic? Um, but yeah, like I've read this blog. This lady read all the like books from all countries um from different countries i believe and people would send her books so that she can read them if she can't find it um yeah so i think it's really uh, it sounds like a lot of fun um it's exciting yeah i can't wait Me um too. you ready for the next question oh yes what what is the readathon oh i i like readathons I love readathon. For those of you who don't know what a readathon is, it's a reading marathon where you read as much as you can with a with a time limit. There are week long readathons. There are forty eight hour readathons. There are twenty four hour readathons, and more. There are even like themed readathons. Like there's the Gilmore Girls readathon. Have you watched Gilmore Girls? Um, <clears throat> I watched a few episodes. Okay. It's on my so list, heard of it, right? Okay. Also, there's Harry Potter readathon. There is underrated books readathon. This one is actually cool. I like it. Underrated books. Um, yeah. So there are so many. There is there is a readathon event pretty much every month now because people enjoy those, and the book community is just so great. Um, so I always have fun participating in those. It's just I think it's just a great way to read more and make new bookish friends. What do you think? Um, I don't think. Um, I think once I uh, I tried participating and I fell asleep. And the other <laughs> time that I tried uh, participating, I got the date wrong. <laughs> I think the time. And by the time I wanted to start, everybody has already finished. So yeah, <laughs> mood. <laughs> but I um, have done readathons yeah. of my own. You know, just close my my yeah. door and not see anyone for twenty four hours. I have done that. 
Uh, just a reminder, these readathons are hosted on different platforms like on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. So if you need more information about these reading events, go to our Instagram page. We'll have all the links there if you want to check them out. If readathons is your thing, um, check out our Instagram page. We'll have all the info there. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's kind of linked to the next question. Do you do read the songs? You said you sort of do. Do you have any favorites? Or can you tell us some of your favorite read the songs that you've tried or participated in? Um, well, not officially. Yeah. I've okay. done read the songs on my own. Um, and it's, it's mostly when I'm really tired of everyone and everything. So I would just read my favorite um, author's books. Um, for as, as long as I can, probably mostly just the weekend, but even if I'm on a break from work, I just stay in my room and I read the whole day, uh, for hours, not on end. So those are my favorites. <laughs> Zeynep's read the thon. You should host one. How about that? <laughs> How about you? Um, if I have time and if I'm in the mood for some binge reading i usually like participating in the short ones like mm -hmm. joey's 24-hour readathon what i like about this one is that everyone in the world start reading at the same time and it happens twice a year i think in april and october so they they usually active on twitter um i've tried that one i've also tried the read in rush a couple of times that's a week-long readathon but i never i don't think i ever finished that one and recently i've been enjoying this um cozy reading night hosted by lauren in the books you can check out her youtube channel it's a it's not it's not a readathon it's like um what would you call those it's a read along or like read with me sort of thing okay so basically you just read for three hours um you know the title says it all cozy reading night and you just need a blanket a comfort food and a book that's all and it sounds right up my alley sounds really nice yeah dreamy yeah the last question of the segment what books do you really 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 want to read next year <laughs> um okay well i want to read um I don't know if you've heard of it. It's Kim Ji Young, born 1982. Have you heard of it? Is that the writer of The Vegetarian? No. Okay. No, no. Uh, it was, it's actually, it was written in Korean in 2016, and it's just been translated into English this year. Um, it caused a lot of controversy when it came out in Korea. It was, mm -hmm. uh, it was, it was around the Me Too movement. A lot of uh, female Korean celebrities were trolled for admitting that they've read the book. Can you believe this? Oh, wow. What the um, fuck? Yeah. Yeah. So from the blurb here, um, it's about it's about the everyday struggle of women against sexism and misogyny in patriarchal societies. Ooh, it, I mean, it sounds like I'm going to be angry a lot reading this. I want to read it. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's a very short book. I have it on my e-reader. Maybe we can buddy read it. I was just about to say that. Yeah, we can do that. We can buddy read it. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay, let's. And next book I want to read, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I, I had plans to read it this year, but I didn't get a chance to do it. So definitely wanted to read it um, next year, hopefully. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know much about this book, to be honest. I just know every, it's like every booktuber on my feet have read that book and loved it. So I haven't heard one single bad review about it, even on Goodreads. So I feel like I'm missing out. So yeah, hopefully I'll be able to read it next year. And the books, your, your favorite author, the the one about slow burn. Um, that's, yeah. I forgot the author, the title. Yeah, so... Those are the books I'm excited to read next year. And I have more, of course, but like these are the oh, ones I can no. think of right now. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, books come out every month and it's very difficult to just um, come up with a list. 
right away. That's true. That's true. Okay. What about you? I mean, you said you want to read Illumine. So yeah, that's a big book. It's going to, it's probably going to take you six months to finish it. <laughs> Actually, my break is coming up soon and I don't really have any traveling plans, obviously. So, okay. I'm getting ideas. <laughs> Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think it's better to read it um, over a short period of time because I will get distracted and, you know, I don't want anything to ruin it for me. But um, other than that, I'll just wait for my favorite authors to drop something on their official pages and I'll just be waiting, stalking and lurking. <laughs> What can you tell us some of your favorite authors? Um, well, there's Kristen Ashley and there's um LJ Shen, and then there's um what's the other ones? Uh what I forgot her name. Crap. Hold on a second. That's fine. Um, we can, I can't remember. If you remember name. it, like when this episode is over, I'm pretty sure you're going to remember and be like, yep, now I remember it. <laughs> well, just have it in the description. Don't worry. Okay. So what kind of genres these authors are really popular for? Okay. I forgot the other one. Jennifer Armentrout. She writes fantasy and apocalyptic okay. books, post-apocalyptic books. Um, and then Kristen Ashley writes Ooh. about everything. Um, who else? Who else did I say? I totally forgot. God, what's wrong with me? So it's just a bunch of uh, genres put together, either by one right. author or by most of them. But basically, um, I have thriller, romance, mobsters. Ooh. Um, mystery, family, drama. It's it's kind of a bunch of a lot of things. I don't know what I just said, but I hope you got it. No, no, no. No, yeah. I mean, it sounds great. I mean, a novel doesn't have to be about one thing. It has, like, there's a bit of everything. Yeah, most of them have everything. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I hope they come out with new books that you like. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Maybe yeah. you'll find you a five-star read next year. I hope Fingers so. crossed. That would, yeah. nice. would be nice. Well, that was a, that's our last question. That was really quick, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we reached the end, I guess. Yeah, yeah. We want to know your reading goals for next year. So don't hesitate to tell us at our book podcast at gmail.com or our Instagram page. I just want to talk about books. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.